All right then, gang. So far, we've seen MongoDB interactions in their purest form without using any specific programming language or environment, right? Like Python or Node or Ruby or PHP or something else like that. And we've only been using the MongoDB shell and MongoDB compass to interact with our database. But a lot of the time, you're gonna be interacting with MongoDB from your application code. For example, from a Node.js application or a Python application, etc. Now, to do that, we'll need to make use of specific MongoDB drivers. And for each environment or programming language that you might use, there's a specific driver for that, which gives us specific language bindings. So if I'm making a Python application, I'd use a Python driver for MongoDB. Or if I'm making a Node application, I'd use a Node driver for MongoDB. And these drivers essentially allow us to communicate with MongoDB on a programmatic level. Now, you can see a list of drivers available for different programming languages on the MongoDB site by going to Resources in the top nav and then selecting Drivers. And then we can just select whatever driver that we need. Now, we'll spend the rest of this series making a Node API, which communicates with MongoDB. So we'll be using the Node driver to bridge the gap between our Node application and MongoDB. So if you click on that, it's gonna show you how to install a node driver and how to use it. Now, before we get too far with this, I wanna point out that for the rest of this series, we'll be working with MongoDB in a node application. So first of all, if you wanna follow along, you'll need node installed on your computer. And ideally, you'll also have at least a basic grasp of how node applications work and how to make a simple express app. If you're completely new to node, I would highly, highly recommend you check out my node crash course first of all and then come back and I'll leave a link to that course down below the video if you do have a basic understanding of node then let's crack on and set up our application and then install the node mongodb driver all right then so first of all open up a new folder in whatever text editor you're using I'm using vs code but you can use whatever you want and then inside the text editor, you need to initialize a new project. Now remember to do this, you have to have Node installed. So in VS Code, I can open up an integrated terminal by going to Terminal and New Terminal. If you don't have VS Code and you need a separate terminal, you can use Command Prompt or Windows Terminal, whatever you wanna use, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure you CD to this directory, whatever directory you have open in your editor, and then you wanna type npm init. This is going to initialize a new node project for us and it's going to create a package.json file and that's going to keep track of all of our dependencies. So I'm going to enter through all these options just to keep them the default values and then at the end of all this we should see this package.json file right here. Okay, cool. So now what we need to do is create a new entry file for our project, our API. So I'm going to do that, new file and call it app.js. So this is where most of our code is gonna go. So we're gonna create an express app inside this file. And to do that, we have to install the npm package express. So let's say npm install down here, express, and then save this to our dependencies. So press enter, and that's gonna install this express package for us. If we go to package.json, we should see express right here. And this is the version I'm using, all right? Cool. So then, now we can start to flesh out the Express app in this file. The first thing we need to do is require Express. So const Express is equal to a require, and we wanna require Express, all right. And then after that, we want to initialize the app. So I'm gonna do a little comment first of all to say init app, and also middleware, which we'll add later on. And then right here to initialize an Express app, we just have to invoke this function right here. So this returns us a function, which is stored in this constant. We just need to initialize the app by invoking this function. So I'm gonna store it in a constant called app and set it equal to Express and then invoke that function, all right? So that's all we need to do to create the app essentially. Now we need to listen for requests and that's gonna be on a specific port number. Now to do that, we can say app and then use a method on that called listen. So we invoke that, then we specify which port number we want to listen to. Well, it's gonna be 3000. So that means when we view this in a browser, we can go to localhost on our computer, port 3000, and then this app right here is gonna listen for requests to that port number. 
Again, if all of this is going over your head, then definitely check out my Node Crash Course. First of all, I go into this in much more depth in that course. All right. Anyway, we can also fire a function once we've started listening for requests, which I'll do. And I'll just do a console log right here. And inside we'll say app listening on port 3000. All right, let's spell this correctly as well. Listening, cool. So now we should see that in the console down here once we start listening for requests, all right? The last thing I wanna do is a lot of comments that say routes and all of our different route handlers are gonna go down here. Now to begin with, we'll set up a get handler. So a get request handler. That means if I send a request to localhost port 3000 forward slash, then we're gonna have a get request handler to handle that request, all right? Now, in our case, it's gonna be forward slash books that we wanna handle because that's the resource we're ultimately gonna be dealing with. So what I'm gonna do is say app and then use a method called get to handle a get request. And that's gonna be forward slash books like so. And then we fire a callback function when that request comes into this URL. And we have a request and response object inside that handler function, which we automatically get. Then all we wanna do for now is just send a response back to whoever's making the request. So to do that, we take the response object right here and use a method on that called JSON to send back a JSON response. And I'm just gonna send back a simple message property on an object and that will just say, welcome to the API, all right? So that, my friends, is pretty much it for now. We have now installed Express and we've required it right here. We've invoked that to start our application. And then we've used a method on the app called listen to listen to a specific port number. And then down here, we have set up our first route handler for get requests to forward slash books. So that's localhost port 3000 forward slash books on our computer. When a user types that into a browser or sends a request from somewhere else, then we're gonna handle it right here. We'll send a response, which is gonna be JSON. And this is the JSON we're sending back, pretty simple. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is run this application. Now to do that, I'm gonna be using Nodemon and that allows us to spin up a development server and it's gonna watch our file for changes. And when we change the file and save it, it's gonna restart the server automatically so we don't have to keep restarting it ourselves manually. So you'll have to install Nodemon to use this and to do that, you wanna install it globally on your computer. So you can say npm install hyphen G to install it globally and then Nodemon like that and press enter. That's gonna install it on your computer and then you can say Nodemon and then whatever the name of the file is, which is app and then press enter. And hopefully this is all gonna work now. Cool, so we can see app is listening on port 3000. So if you go to a browser and go to this address, localhost and then a colon and then port 3000 and then forward slash books because that's what we set up the handler function for for that get request to forward slash books and then press enter you should get back that json response in the browser which we do awesome we get the message welcome to the api now later on instead of just sending back this json we are going to be communicating with mongodb getting all the books and sending the book json back instead but for now i just wanted to make sure that this endpoint was working all right then, so the next thing we wanna do is we want to install the MongoDB driver for Node. So to do that, just open up a new terminal. I'm gonna click this plus icon to do that. Make sure you're in the correct directory for the project and then just type npm install MongoDB. That's the package name and then we're gonna save that to our dependencies. So press enter to install this. And then once that's done, we can check it out in package.json. Yep, it's right here. So this is what we're gonna be using ultimately to connect to our MongoDB database. And we'll see how to do that in the next lesson.